For over a decade, a narrative has been pushed how the Horde are the bad guys committing all the crimes and the Alliance is constantly on the defense. However, despite there obviously being some merit to this, the Alliance is really not all that innocent either. I've previously made a video like this years ago, but in this one, I wanted to really expand on the list, cover other perspectives. So let's take a look at what are some of the worst crimes of the Alliance. Before we get into the list, I'd like to talk a bit about the sponsor of this video, Fishing Clash, probably the best fishing simulator out there for both Android and iOS. The game is completely free to play and despite being quite simple on first glance, there is actually a lot of content for you to do hidden behind the surface. The mechanics are straightforward, you wait for a fish to bite and you catch it, however, unlike in the real world, you can fish across the entire planet at the click of a button. From Loch Ness to the Mediterranean Sea to the Galapagos Islands and even as far as Japan. When you pick the location, you can collect and upgrade your fishing rods, lures and you can with that quite easily fish for carps and catfishes, but you will need some serious gear for battling sea monsters such as sharks, which are obviously quite a challenge. To make it even more interesting, there is a develop PP feature in the game, so you have duels, tournaments, leaderboards, championships, and to top it all off, there are new events every single week where you can explore brand new adventures. You can support the channel by downloading the game through my link in the description, so see you in game. Number 10. Bale Dune. Bale Dune are a group of dwarves sent by the Explorers League whose main mission for ages now has been to learn more about their ancestors, gather artifacts and collect titan knowledge. Well, this time they went a bit overboard as they had reached Belmodan, which is what they call their base, but this was actually Southern Barrens, Skellendor and the ancestral home of the Stone Spire Torren. Well, the dwarves set up, saw the Torren as a nuisance and they just kicked them out, killing many innocents in the process, really seeing them as nothing else but irrelevant pests that are standing in the way of them learning more about this ancient titan complex. The Torren later on even tried to negotiate with the dwarves to make some sort of a peace, but you know a whale as the dwarves just didn't care. Ultimately, the horde champion intervened and later on as they dug too deep, they had angered the spirits of the earth that almost completely wiped them out. They were all but destroyed, but during Battle for Azeroth the alliance did reoccupy Beldun and although more than likely it wasn't the original dwarves. Now, despite this being a dwarven expedition and not exactly an alliance mission, it was nonetheless affiliated and ultimately condoned by the faction. Number 9. Camp Taurajo. This actually ties in with the first point as it is right next door, but on this occasion this was actually authorized directly by the Alliance General. Camp Taurajo was an important outpost of the Torren and later on it was quite an important to the region in terms of recruitment of the soldiers as well as a strategic position. Well, the Alliance got false reports that the Horde was planning this crazy offensive, so General Hawthorne led the assault directly into the camp. He ordered a firebomb of the place and burned the entire camp to the ground in a completely uncalled for invasion. Now, to be fair, he did give an opening for civilians to escape, but despite that, civilians still suffered and ultimately, he even court-martialed a few of his warriors that participated in the looting. Nonetheless, despite these measures, it was a crime that the Torrent had not forgotten to this day, directly authorized by the Alliance High Command. Number 8. Neutral Goblin Ship Back in Cataclysm, as the volcano exploded, Galifix realized that this would be a good time to enslave the goblins and steal all of their savings, so he did exactly that and departed for Ashara. However, as soon as they left, they were spotted by an alliance ship that almost immediately opened fire at them and sunk the ship. This event was later expanded upon within the Chronicle, but not really that much has changed. It is just said that the goblin ship ran into an alliance horde naval battle and the alliance shot was just an accident. Accident. Still, however, it is definitely a crime as the faction destroyed a completely neutral ship and this was not on the either side of the war and it is what ultimately led the goblins to join the horde. However, 
I gotta say I can't really blame the Alliance all that much on this occasion as to be fair, the Horde did use goblin mercenaries for quite a long time, so seeing a big goblin ship heading your way that may be similar to one that might be aligned with the Horde is not really an occasion where you would want to take a risk. Number 7. The Purge of Dalaran for the longest time, Dalaran was the city-state that was the bastion of knowledge and magic. For hundreds of years, it was the home to the various races of Azeroth, but within the recent decades, it presented itself as the neutral, above all war place, dedicated to magic and not really faction squabbling. However, in Mists of Pandaria, that all changed. Seeing how Garrosh was ramping up the war slowly but surely, a lot of people started thinking that the Horde should not even be a part of Dalaran, and even the Blood Elf Horde leader, Aethas Sunreaver, wanted to push for leaving the Horde entirely because Garrosh was just going nuts. However, Things turned around as Garrosh ordered an infiltration into Dalaran and the theft of the powerful Divine Bell. This immediately enraged Jaina and she decided to deal with the Horde of Dalaran in an instant. She went on a crazy rampage where she imprisoned Aethas and many of the other Sun Reavers and worst of all, she even started attacking fleeing completely innocent civilians in a fit of rage. Now, Aethas did have some blame on him as well he didn't assist Garrosh, he sort of looked the other way. but. Ultimately, many civilians perished and people that were completely innocent and not involved in any way in the faction conflict. Later on, the Horde would be readmitted into Dalaran, but this event known as the Purge of Dalaran remains a stain between both Dalaran and Alliance history. Number 6. In Tournament Camps after the Alliance went through brutal wars against the Orcs, they needed to figure out what exactly are they going to do with them. Many advocated for a complete extermination and some for placing them inside internment camps, but ultimately Terranus, King of Lordaeron, ruled for the side of the camps. I can't say it is really that bad of an idea, as what exactly were they supposed to do with these Orcs after they had committed every crime in the book on their lands? However, what later occurred with these camps was most definitely a crime. As Blackmore took over, gladiator battles became a thing, there was a lot of profit and the orcs were treated terribly. They were essentially enslaved, lethargic and definitely were not in good conditions in the slightest. One of these slaves was Thrall that grew up in one of the camps and was forced to become a gladiator. Ultimately, it was Thrall that together with the other orcs managed to free themselves and leave the eastern kingdoms and this event, as you might know it, became crucial in their history. Ultimately, it is a really complicated matter. The orcs themselves definitely did do terrible things to humans, so I can't really blame them for taking vengeance and they did show mercy by not completely exterminating them as the orcs had obviously intended to do that with the humans. However, what the internment camps descended into was really not that much further down. Number 5. Battle for Undercity so, as the Horde and the Alliance combined their forces and attacked Artus right at his doorstep, Varimatras plotted together with Grand Apothecary Putris and they attacked both of their forces, killing Bolvar in the process. This caught everyone off guard and Troll immediately sent a force to attack Undercity and to retake it from the rebels. However, the Alliance, instead of believing the story of their ally at the time, instead just attacked as well, they didn't believe that this was an internal betrayal and they saw this as the perfect opportunity to retake Lordaeron for the Alliance once again. Ultimately, both factions fought their way into Undercity and had a brief skirmish. Now, despite the fact that Varian did lose his friend and the Alliance suffered a serious loss at the Bradgate because of Grand Apothecary, it didn't really make this event right in any way. The factions were allied at the time and Troll and Horde obviously had nothing to do with this, yet Varian and the Alliance launched a surprise attack and began a brand new war with conquest in mind. I wouldn't really say unpleasant provoked, but also not really justifiable. Number 4. Jade Forest So, initially, both the Alliance and the Horde made a huge expedition into the newly discovered lands of Pandaria and they met on their way there. The Alliance came in with their skyship running into Horde boats and a gigantic battle ensued. 
All of this was really fair by the rules of war, until the Alliance hit the ground and took over an outpost. Suddenly, the Alliance ran into horde sailors swimming towards them as their ships had been destroyed, more than likely meaning to surrender. Rel Nightwind refused the order, but it happened nonetheless and all the surrendered combatants were executed at the orders of Sky Admiral Rogers, who said that they would do the same so there's really no shame in doing so. Despite being at war, this was a war crime by the definition and a huge stain on the reputation of the Alliance that really went unpunished up to this day. Number 3. Attack on the Horde Knowing what we know now, Sylvanas is obviously not that nice of a person and she committed crimes that could fit three times this list. However, back in Legion, she really was innocent and a blatant war crime was committed by Yen Greymane. The Horde and the Alliance fought together against the overwhelming demonic invasion at the Broken Shore. Now, as Vol'jin fell and the Horde started getting overwhelmed, Sylvanas naturally called in a retreat which, from Jen's perspective, since he didn't really see what was going on, appeared like a betrayal and that they had led them into a trap. This combined with the death of Gassan and the fall of Gilneas led to quite a vengeful attitude. So later on, as both the Alliance and the Horde went to Stormheim with their own separate missions, Jen's ship suddenly got intel on the Horde and Sylvanas and decided to just say screw it and go for it. There was no official declaration of war or anything, Jen just decided to strike their own ally, which sparked a new conflict. To make matters worse, this was during possibly the worst threat to Azeroth up to the current date, where there really was no room for politics or eternal wars. Now, of course, you could say this was just Jen's attack based on personal reasons, and indeed it was, but at the time, Greymane was one of the key figures of the Alliance and the leader of all their forces on the Broken Isles. So ultimately, Gen's personal vendetta was an official act of war without a declaration of one. Number 2. The Stone Masons Despite the Defiance Brotherhood ultimately obviously turning into a criminal gang, this was an alliance crime from the start. Originally, after the Second War, the Stonemasons Guild was hired to rebuild Stormont and really seeing what was done to the city, it was a lot of work. Just imagine the rebuilding probably the largest city on Azeroth from the ground up. Well, through the infiltration of Onyxia, the House of Nobles refused to pay due to not having money and obviously the workers caused a massive riot. Stonemasons Guild was ordered to be disbanded and in the riot, a rock hit Queen Tiffinbrin killing her almost instantly. This enraged Varian who then further escalated and just drove them out of the city. Then the Stonemasons turned into Defiance Brotherhood and decided to collect their payment through looting, raiding and just sabotaging Storm. Ultimately, they obviously went too far and from regular bandits they became a serious threat, only to ultimately be all but destroyed. Obviously, this was Onyxia in disguise that played a role in this entire conflict, but despite that, the Alliance was obviously in the wrong here, as well as Varian Vin. The workers moved their entire lives and families to storm into work and done a lot of work, and ultimately they just ended up being taken advantage of. Lassie, number one, Blood Elf Extermination. It is hard to say which alliance this was, but at this time it was the alliance, at least before Stormwind took over the saddle. As the alliance of Orderon was completely shattered by the Scourge, it was Commander Gerritos that was the main guy in charge as the strongest remaining faction leader. The Blood Elves at the time saw him as their only way out and through Kiltus pledged their allegiance, but it turns out he didn't really like them all that much. First, Gerritos sent the Blood Elves on a complete suicide mission and the only way out for them to survive was to accept the help of the Naga. When he learned of that cooperation, he decided to imprison and essentially exterminate Gildas and his elves. However, only through the help of the Naga, once again did they manage to escape and venture into Outland. Now, of course, there was not the Alliance in its current form, and knowing what Gerritos did, they would more than likely denounce him, but at the same time, it was the official policy of the faction and a time when the Alliance attempted to almost completely eliminate a race. As a reminder, if you want to support the channel, check out the sponsor of the video, Fishing Clash. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching. Check out the new info about Savannahs by clicking on the screen and also check out the Nords Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.